Well, good evening, YouTube. Stephen Reardon here with Smart Home Comfort. I am sitting at the R.E. Michael Company, um, waiting on them to come and open up the store so I can get myself a Bosch inverter board. Um, the system that this board is on um, was one of the units that was in the video, the Bosch testimonial video, and um, don't remember how old that system would be exactly, but um, let me see, see if I can find that. Um, uh, it was the first system that I put in. Um, not necessarily the first Bosch, but the first of the systems for that home. And um, that was installed, it looks like June of 2018. Um, yeah. June of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Or horribly confused um, so anyway the board when I arrived had no display and um, went through a couple of troubleshooting steps to uh, confirm it and when we um, the one thing they wanted me to check before we put a new board in it was to confirm that the ohm readings on the compressor were um, appropriate and uh, they're looking for less than 1.5 ohms equal on each leg we had 0.6 so we're in good shape I believe um, shout out to Fred um, for the assist from Bosch um, tech support and um, I don't know if we'll be able to get much in the way of video of the replacement but we'll try and we'll uh, see where we get or when this guy shows up it is 7 22 p.m. on August 4th so anyway we'll uh, see if we can maybe do a testimonial or a how-to on replacing a Bosch inverter board stay tuned well there they are the one on the right is the one that is a downer for the moment. We'll go ahead and get set up and um, go through replacing this inverter board. This portion of the video is brought to you by House Call Pro. Use the website link housecallpro.com slash Stephen Reardon to save money on your House Call Pro subscription. It'll be interesting to see how much trouble the noise of this other system causes with the potential for audio. Power has been off on this system for at least an hour now. Um, so, I'm confident that we won't have any leftover voltages. You want to be careful with these boards because they can store voltage in the capacitors. Most of this is um, color coded and plug and play, but I'm going to take some photos just to be sure that uh, I don't screw things up too much. What I'm concerned with here is the compressor leads, uh, making sure I get those lined up properly. Everything else is going to be pretty straightforward, I think.
start by taking off the uh, high voltage. No. Um, yeah, we're going to pull the red and black from the uh, terminals at the high voltage inlet. Then we'll just start unplugging the rest of it. This one's giving me a little trouble. Not sure what the holdup is exactly. There seems to be a little retainer clip that I just dropped that keeps that plug from coming undone accidentally or vibrating loose <coughs> Sit on, uh, nah, I'm good. Uh, I was blown away that we were able to get one tonight. Did John didn't have it? Yep. Some uh, bagel bites or <laughs> anything? Nah, I'm good. You good? Alright. Just holler at me. I, I got dogs through the house, so just let me know. All right. When you uh, want to get in, no problem. All right. Probably shouldn't need to get in. Okay. Right. Um, considering once it's on, it'll be pretty much ready to roll. Okay. So. All right. Thank you.
there are a couple of screws here in the middle that uh, attach the board to the heat sink and those are going to need or the back of that section is going to need thermal paste um, there's actually some junk on the end of this that uh, indicates where your thermal paste is I think there's only three I didn't bother reading the instructions And we got a ground wire that I didn't think about. do have a little bit of a heat mark you won't be able to see it in the video maybe I'll take a picture but it's right up here at the top of this thermal paste section and it looks like it could be the culprit here everything else seems to be pretty copacetic so that's that In the box, we've got a bag with some thermal paste and then new screws. I'm guessing if we need them, we can use those new screws. We've got the warranty claim form. And the new board in the bag. tighten this screw up that I loosened but didn't need to. It looks like it's our uh, thermistor for the heat sink. I think I will check the instructions to confirm a couple of other things. Maybe. They're saying to apply thermal paste to those three sections. We do have, and once again, you're not going to see it, but that section where the uh, other picture was. Um, it does appear that we've got a little bit of a heat mark right there. So, I'd say that uh, there's our 
there's our fault. I'm going to go ahead and get this thermal paste done here. On the new one. Looks like it leaked a little bit. Wonderful. So there's three sections on the back of the three-ton board that need to have thermal paste applied. Make sure you get a good covering. Because if it was heat that killed the first one, you don't want that to happen again. Alright, I think we've probably got enough paste on there. This does need to, the heat sink does need to route through there. What did the instructions say about the long ones? Long screws. Yellow ones go there, there, and there. So there's three long ones. They're marked in yellow on the instructions. Not sure where my screwdriver got to. The screws aren't actually yellow, they just are labeled as yellow. There's three long ones in the package. And then it looks like we've got two red ones and two blue ones. Let's see. Two red ones. All right. Great. Where did, where did it go? There it is. The red screws, or the screws that are labeled red, are kind of long and skinny. Not as long as the three ones we just put in, but definitely skinnier. From there, we got four screws to mount the board plate to the unit. frame I guess we should say and then power goes back to the board here That ground wire back in. If it'll 
play nice. There we go. All right. There's a two wire orange plug that goes over here just under where the condenser fan motor plugs in. Then the condenser fan motor plug. That one goes there. That is the heat sink on the back. This multicolor purple, black, yellow, and blue is your low voltage wiring and we've got the black wire there's a two wire black that plugs into this molex here there's a two wire white that plugs into this molex Generally speaking, they only go one way. Ah, I seem to be trying to make this one go in the wrong place. There we go. There is a red, black, and white that plugs in under that. And there's a red plug, top right corner. The reversing valve is a blue plug. There is a yellow plug here. And I found the white one. It was hiding down in the darkness. We'll get some zip ties to tidy this up once we confirm operation. Get that tucked in there. The uh, crankcase heater with two yellow wires. And then we'll revisit my picture red, black, and blue for the compressor. Red's on top. Black in the middle. And blue at the bottom. And then there was a... I don't know exactly what you call this thing, but it's this gray collar here that goes over the red and the blue um, wires. We're gonna get that and uh, move it to the new board. I think it's a filter of some kind, but I can't think of what it's called. A little clamp collar. There's a little standoff here that holds the red and the blue wire. Let's see if I can get that out. This little Christmas tree thingy here. guessing that's just to hold these wires in place for the most part. And then we'll get that clamp collar on there. 
frequency color, whatever it's supposed to be. save that for the next one. Just make sure I didn't forget anything. I don't think we had any different dip switch settings on this. I think the capacity limiter, the single switch here by the LED display, uh, was the only one that we had enabled previously. So that should do it. I'm going to throw power and see what we get. We've got lights. immediately decides it wants to bring on that condenser fan. That is awesome. Oh, my feet are asleep. <clears throat> well, that seems like that's about it. Replacing an inverter board on a Bosch heat pump, three ton. Um, other than a couple of zip ties and whatnot, I think we're we're good. We'll let it run for a bit and see um, how it ramps. Oh, my knees and my feet cramped up beside the unit really can be a pain. There. So she's going through the, uh, she went through the startup fan and she's bringing the compressor on now. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get it to force cooling or check charge mode just to get it up to speed quickly. Now we're getting it around. Suction pressure is 145. Head pressure is 275. And it's got evaporator temperature for number eight and number nine, respectively. Forty-six and ninety-one. One suction pressure one forty five, head pressure still two seventy five. And we're getting about a beer can cold, so that's positive. Alrighty then. I think that's about all we're going to worry about right now. Alrighty. So we've got the system back online. And it is cooling. Confirmed by the customer. Thanks for watching. Hopefully by the time I've edited some of this, it's not worth watching. But anyway, 
If you'd like to save 7% on your tool purchase, go to truetechtools.com and use the coupon code R-A-R-D-O-N for a nice discount. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.